Hi, my name is Helen Gunter, and I'm from the Australian Institute for Bioengineering and Nanotechnology at the University of Queensland. And today I'm going to talk to you about how we've been using Oxford nanopore sequencing to understand the manufacture, delivery and action of mRNA vaccines. The COVID-19 pandemic has demonstrated that mRNA vaccines are both safe and effective, can be developed rapidly and manufactured at a massive scale. This has led to the development of a broad range of new mRNA therapeutics that both treat and prevent a range of different diseases. These are part of a broader RNA research ecosystem in which small interfering RNAs are used for clinical applications, double-stranded RNAs are used for vaccines for agriculture, and creative RNAs are developed for use as switches in synthetic biology. Today, I'll step you through how we have been using Oxford nanopore sequencing to investigate synthetic mRNA quality throughout the manufacturing process. So what is the structure of a synthetic mRNA? It's composed of a five prime cap, three and five prime untranslated regions, a hard coded poly A tail, and a coding region. The synthetic mRNA is um, synthesized in vitro then delivered into cells or organisms and translated into a protein using the intracellular machinery. The mRNA can encode almost any drug, including those that are difficult to manufacture, such as antigens for vaccines, antibodies, enzymes, signaling molecules, and CRISPR. Our lab is exploring innovations in mRNA therapeutics and their intracellular activity in collaboration with the BASE facility at the University of Queensland. BASE are manufacturing mRNA for commercial, academic and government research and are leading Australia for the number of preclinical mRNAs being manufactured. How are synthetic mRNAs manufactured? First, a plasmid template is synthesized, including the mRNA sequence, which is preceded by a T7 promoter. The plasmid is then linearized um, three prime to the poly A tail and in vitro transcribed by clean cap T7 polymerase. The mRNA is then purified and formulated into lipid nanoparticles for use in preclinical research. mRNA quality and integrity are of central importance to mRNA vaccine efficacy and safety, so quality monitoring is of central importance in mRNA manufacturing, particularly when we consider that in vitro transcription can produce off-target mRNAs that reduce vaccine efficacy and safety. Current recommendations are to use a literal room full of specialized equipment to conduct quality analyses. For this reason, mRNA quality analyses take about half of Pfizer's 60-day production schedule. We sought to develop a more streamlined mRNA quality evaluation method. We used Oxford nanopore sequencing to develop a comprehensive test of mRNA vaccine quality. Different nanopore sequencing kits can be used to investigate mRNA vaccine quality throughout the manufacturing process, from the plasmid template, in vitro transcribed mRNAs, and after lipid nanoparticle formulation. Ligation and rapid sequencing provide data on the integrity and purity of the plasmid template. Both cDNA and direct RNA sequencing can be used to investigate the quality of mRNA vaccines, yielding diverse quality data, which I'll step you through. Firstly, the integrity of the plasmid template can be confirmed through ligation or rapid sequencing. This can confirm that the complete plasmid sequence is covered and that there have been no spontaneous deletions during plasmid propagation. Here, each gray bar depicts a unique sequence aligned against the plasmid um, reference sequence. As each bar covers the length of the reference sequence, we conclude that this plasmid template is indeed intact. Next, cDNA sequencing yields diverse quality information on mRNA vaccines. 
Here we can see cDNA sequencing performed on an EGFP control vaccine that was produced at the base facility. The cDNA sequences were aligned to the plasmid reference sequence. We found that the majority of mRNAs aligned to the reference uh, to the vaccine sequence, which is a good thing. However, there were some unintended sequences. These were likely to have been generated by in vitro transcription initiated upstream or downstream of the T7 promoter, and from run-on transcription caused by incomplete plasmid linearization, leading to full uh, mRNAs that are the length of the plasmid um, reference. Our test, which we term VACSEEK, also provides comprehensive information on poly-A tail length by using tail finder analysis, mRNA integrity by analyzing the fragment length distribution and the amount of contamination from organisms such as E. coli, which is used for plasmid propagation. This information is extremely helpful for refining mRNA manufacturing processes such as plasmid purification and in vitro transcription. Additionally, it can test the consistency of different manufacturing batches and the impact of transport on mRNA integrity. We plan to refine and benchmark our mRNA vaccine test against the existing quality recommendations. Next, I'll tell you about how we're applying VaxSeq in mRNA vaccine manufacturing at the base facility. VaxSeq is being used for routine monitoring uh, um, of manufacturing and the development of new processes at base. The propagation of mRNA vaccine plasmid templates can introduce spontaneous deletions, which can impact mRNA vaccine function and integrity. As mentioned previously, Oxford nanopore sequencing can confirm plasmid integrity. Here are some data from one of BASE's mRNA vaccines and its plasmid template. Here are the results of ligation sequencing of a plasmid template prepared as part of routine manufacturing. From this IGV plot, you can see that there's very low coverage at the area of the poly-A tail, suggesting a spontaneous deletion in this region. This was confirmed by tail finder analysis of the in vitro transcribed mRNA vaccine. Here we can see that the observed poly-A tail length of the mRNA vaccine in question was significantly shorter than the intended length, which was 113 nucleotides. This is very different to an mRNA vaccine without a poly-A tail deletion. As poly-A tail length is important for stabilizing mRNA vaccines and for their intracellular activity, the plasmid template was then resynthesized. Next, we used VaxSeq to validate mRNA vaccine formulation at base. mRNA vaccines are packaged into lipid nanoparticles, which are important for cellular uptake into patients. However, this process exposes the mRNAs to conditions that may degrade them, such as heat and mechanical forces. To test whether these conditions impact mRNA integrity, we compared mRNA extracted from a formulated vaccine to an unformulated control. The two mRNAs were then sequenced using direct RNA sequencing. Here you can see two read length distribution plots. When we compare the read lengths of the unformulated controls to the mRNAs extracted from formulated vaccines, we observe a slight increase in the abundance of short degraded mRNA fragments, here at about the 500 nucleotide range. However, the majority of mRNA fragments do indeed remain intact. A more detailed analysis showed that there was a roughly 1% increase in the proportion of 5' degradation, which would have a minor impact on protein translation. Despite this minor difference, the 5' UTRs of the formulated and unformulated mRNAs appear to be very similar according to this IGV plot. This analysis can be used to fine tune and monitor the formulation protocols at base and compare them to those of other facilities. So in summary, we've developed a comprehensive and streamlined mRNA vaccine quality test using Oxford nanopore sequencing. 
This test yields quality information from throughout the mRNA manufacturing process, facilitating process improvement and batch monitoring. This test is being used in mRNA vaccine manufacturing at the base facility. If you'd like to learn more about the base facility, then come and check out the website and drop us a line if you'd like to order an mRNA. I'd like to thank my colleagues, uh, both in Tim Mercer's lab and at BASE, who helped with this presentation. I'd also like to thank uh, um, Oxford Nanopore for the invitation, and the Genome Innovation Hub and CVC, who also collaborated in this project. Thank you very much for your attention.